Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that. Shit. Fuck. Damn. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> Here we go. Damn. Fucking wind. Ow. Well, good Saturday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course. Joe Boo is back at the Red Brick House, but we got Joe Bear. What's up, Joe Bear? Maybe I need to put Joe Bear over here. You know, as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great weekend. And guys, girls, kids, <laughs> I'm so happy. This is it. You have some teams that are literally already in training camp. Let's go down the list right now. Um, I believe today, veterans report for the uh, Baltimore Ravens. The rookies have been there already since the 12th. Today's the 20th. Uh, Arizona Cardinals on the 23rd. Falcons on the 24th. Ravens, of course, today. Buffalo Bills on the 23rd. The Panthers on the 23rd. The Bears. Their rookies reported on the 16th. The Bears veterans reported yesterday. Cincinnati Bengals on the 23rd, Cleveland Doo, Doo Browns on the 23rd, Cowboys, of course, on the 24th, Denver on the 23rd, Lions on the 23rd, the Green Bay Packers reporting tomorrow, um, the veterans are, <coughs> the rookies already have, the Texans <coughs> have already been in there for a couple of days already. And the Indianapolis Colts on the 24th, the Jaguars on the 23rd, Kansas City's reporting today. The Raiders on the 23rd, the Chargers on the 23rd, the Rams on the 23rd, the Dolphins on the 23rd, the Vikings on the 23rd, New England 23rd, New Orleans on the 23rd, the New York Stinking Giants on the 23rd, the Jets on the 23rd, the Eagles on the 23rd, the 24th for the Steelers. The San Francisco 49ers on the 23rd, Seahawks on 23rd, Tampa Bay 23rd, Titans on the 23rd, and the Washington Commanders with the left hand up on the 23rd. So it's here. The next couple of days, today is the 20th of July, it's about football. From here on out, finally, we have made it through the offseason of our discontent. And... We all know that Stephen Jones is talking about, you know, we're making some progress and stuff with contracts with Dak, that we're having positive talks and things like that. Today, I want to do something a little bit different here this morning because we are always taught a narrative from the media. And see, this is the thing that's really good about having social media and YouTube and people that aren't professionals. See, if you're ESPN, you got to cover everybody. And I, I've done this analogy and say that they're like a general practitioner. They know a little bit about everything. The great thing about having a YouTube channel, you know, and there's so many great Dallas Cowboy channels. You might like me and my style. You might hate me, and that's fine. Some of you come here because you do like my style. <laughs> a lot of you Eagle fans and 49er fans and Commander fans, you come here just to hate me. That's fine. That's the bottom line for everything is if people aren't watching, it doesn't matter what the message is. That's the first thing you have to get is people watching. Second thing is you have to get what people want to hear about, the topics. And this is where media has gone off the rails where sometimes it's setting a narrative to get people to watch that may not actually be factual. And that's not just sports, that's in general. They're going to ride the wave of the news and continue it. They're going to play with your emotion and your fears and so on to get you to watch. And the reality is, is nobody really knows shit. Nobody can really predict 100% what's going to happen. So I'm going to actually look back at the preseason polls that they have and see how they did with what they came up with. But also, too. The other thing I want to talk about is the social media is growing by leaps and bounds. Things are changing and evolving where 
everything is kind of coming to the YouTubes, the Twitter live feeds, and so on. It's getting away from everybody watching television. It's the, where they're really getting their numbers now is by taking clips because nobody has two or three hours to sit there and watch TV. Now, of course, you know, it's a sports bar. It's going to be on all day and things like that. But the average person is swiping and moving left and right. And see, this is where the dynamics are different from what you may have seen on TV. And this is the thing that people don't seem to understand, that it's different being on YouTube. It doesn't matter what you did on another platform. It's what you do here, that the people that are watching here are different than the people that used to watch you on ESPN. And it's different from platform to platform to platform. You may be great on Facebook, but nobody gives a rat's ass about you on YouTube. And that's what I found out, because that's where I originally started was posting on my page <clears throat> on Facebook. It's great, I had five, 6,000 subscribers or followers. And I would do videos with the same thing and put it on YouTube, and I'd get five or 10 views. It wouldn't necessarily translate. And so that's what you have to learn about the platform. And you can see where some people, you instantly say, they're going to do great. Shannon Sharp has definitely understood about the atmosphere that he creates with Club Shay Shay. He's there with a nice drink. He's got his own, you know, alcohol, you know, uh, and everything else. It's like it's in his living room. It's like he's bringing in the guests and it's like we just hanging out with my boys talking. And you look at that and say, I want to sit there and be there hanging out with those guys. The other part of this is people don't seem to understand is it's a two way conduit. So those people like to come in here and hate me. They're looking for that reaction from me. It's two way as opposed to being on television. You're just blasting it out there with no repercussions. You're not actually interacting with your fan base. You're not creating that bond that says, I want to go hang out with this person. Because ultimately, that's the thing that you have to do. If it's just, you know, here's the guy with all the information, or here's the guy with the information that's my friend, where are you going to want to go? That's the thing. And Skip Bayless's stick got old and the changing dynamics. And it's not just undisputed. Because I don't know that first take is as hot as it used to be because there's more competition. There's more places for people to go. And you're seeing that evolving. And you're kind of seeing um, Stephen A. understanding this too. Not to try and bury Skip Bayless. I'm not. I actually just want to point out the difference because, see, I can see where Skip Bayless's YouTube life, I don't think it's going to be great. I just don't. I don't think it's too dry, not interactive. It's, and, and he's 73 years old. I'm not going to say anything about age because people say I'm too old for YouTube. And I'm not going to denigrate him because of his age. But I'm not sure that he is going to evolve to what people want, that, the, that this old dog needs a new trick. On the other hand, I look at Scoop City. Scoop City has only been here you know, for a couple of days. They, they came out with a bang. They understood the dynamics. Let's get Stephen Jones on here and get him talking about contracts for the Cowboys. That's how you open it up with a bang. The next thing they have... Well, I'll tell you what, Let, let's watch Skip Bayless first. Skip shares why all, all in my ass tweet is his favorite, the Skip Bayless show. Let's listen to this. <laughs> what was the most memorable tweet you've ever sent? I have sent some nuclear doozies, Evan. But seriously, the all-timer has to be a fairly recent four-word special. That tweet went all in my ass. 
except it was all in comma my ass. Pause. I tweeted this fairly early in NFL free agency when it came crystal clear, clear as broken glass, that Jerry Jones' vow, his proclamation of I'm all in, was all wrong. He was actually all out, as we've come to see. So I tweeted, all in, comma, my ass. Meaning, all in, I'm sure. And you either really got it, or you really, really did not. Either you thought it was the perfectly timed and cleverly created skewer of Jerry Jones, or that I had lost my mind and gone off somewhere I shouldn't have gone. But I remain perfectly proud of that four-word, one-comma tweet because I said more with those four words and single comma than I ever have in any tweet I've ever sent. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from the Skip Bayless show. And don't forget. Okay. Okay. Now. Um, <clears throat> I, I, okay. Let, 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 me, let me clarify something here too. And this is because I know I'm going to have people out there that are saying, well, you're still a nobody. I am. I am a nobody. I I flat out am a nobody. OK, and I am OK with that. I am Joe the fan. OK, I'm Joe the fan that has been doing YouTube really as long as Dak Prescott has been in the league eight years. And it's been a slow climb. When I started, there was me, Law Nation, Vosh Lombardi. And Shango, basically, that, that was, you know, we are all in the, you know, low you know, 10, 15,000 range and things like that. It's more the infancy of Cowboys YouTube. The Dallas Cowboys didn't have one until, I think, 2018. ESPN and guys, pff, they poo-pooed. Uh, uh, YouTube, nobody wanted to be on YouTube. It was literally you on the tube. Now, of course, all the refugees from the newspapers, the magazines, and television shows are all coming in to YouTube. This is the new platform, the thing that they used to laugh at us, and so on. And so here's the thing. When you see some people on YouTube, you can see that they detest being on on YouTube. They're doing it because they have to because their shit dried up. And there's this arrogance about people on YouTube that you should just bow down and get away because the professionals are here. And there's nothing that pisses me off more than when people come on that have had a career elsewhere and basically denigrate the people who have been here and that are doing the work like they're nothing. Instead of that, what they should be doing is working together with those who have been here because the best way to grow in YouTube is actually collaborating with others. My fans and your fans become our fans. And that's one of those things that they don't get. It's social media meaning social, the group, all of us together, as opposed to news media, that's a one-way conduit. Now, here's what I can say. It's a brand new channel. Scoop City. You can see some people that come out, and when they get there, the arrogance of it and everything else, that figure, I am blah, 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 so all I have to do is show up on YouTube, and I'm going to be a star. That's not the way it works. 
You may be somebody elsewhere, but you get here, you may be a nobody that nobody watches. Now, I've watched Scoop City. Like I said, Scoop City, they came out with the bang. They got Stephen Jones here talking about contracts and everything else, which gets the door open. They've got about a thousand subscribers right now, but I can see this channel and know this mother humper is going to blow up. Chase Young, I'm sorry, Chase Daniels knows his shit. He's going to give you his perspective of being an NFL quarterback. Okay. They're younger. They're energetic. They make you feel like you want to hang out with them. Let's listen to them a little bit, and you'll see the difference of what I'm talking about here before we go back to what they said about last season. Let's go back to Nick Sirianni. Sorry, but like I just can't get it out of my head. I'm sure our listeners are are thinking about it too. Nick Sirianni, um, lots of rumors, and I thought they were dumbfounded. I didn't didn't like them, that he was going to lose his job uh, at the end of last year. I, I didn't quite get it. I'm like, how do you follow the graces that fast based on the seasons you've had? But do you think Howie Roseman having an influence and a say in the coordinators hires of Kellen Moore and Vic Fangio, two of the bigger, bigger names out there, do you think this is a hot seat season for Nick Sirianni? And was this a way for Nick Sirianni, because he said, okay, let's do it to take some heat off of him? Or like, what happens if they don't lose and make the playoffs? Is he gone? Like, what are you hearing about that? Yeah. Or do you know? I, I- I think at this point, they keep Nick Sirianni because of what he's done, right? Like the whole time, uh, some people that I was talking to there who who knew what was going on would share, like they were pretty steady that that Nick's got to keep his job. Like he he deserves to to be here for what he's done. But they want results with that kind of roster. So I look at it as Philly got rid of Doug Peterson after he won them a Super Bowl. For them to move on and Nick, I just don't think it would have been a great look for Howie. I don't think it would have been a great look for ownership. Jeffrey Lurie's so involved. He's got such a big say oversee in, in a good way, right? So they've had success because of Jeffrey Lurie. Uh, he's a good owner. Yeah. And I, I just believe that they felt that Nick could still do this, uh, and, and he can. So we'll see how this goes and how the season plays out. But if we know that Howie believes that the roster is built for a championship, that tells you that the leash probably isn't that long for the coach (laughs) leading the charge here if he doesn't take them there, right? Like, that's how Mm -hmm. it works, uh, unless something major happens. So we'll we'll, we'll see how this unfolds. But you played for the Eagles, right? So, like, you know the Howie Roseman um, presence and effect. You remember how he being around you guys and feeling the power he has in that organization. There's no doubt how he had his pulse on everything that went on with that building. It's sort of crazy to me because if you remember when Chip Kelly uh, came in as a head coach, he took over all personnel decisions. So how he sort of got moved to the side a little bit. And then when Doug Peterson gets hired, he moves back into that position um, that he has. And I remember, look, when when Doug Peterson got hired in 2017 uh, or 2016, excuse me, um, you know, I, Doug brought me over from Kansas City, where Doug had been the offensive coordinator for three years. So Doug and I were really close. Think about spending every waking day with your with your buddy offensive coordinator, and you're drawing up plays, and you're having success. And the success we had in KC, it brought Doug a head coaching job. And I just remember always being in Doug's office, like he was always leaning on me for. Um, not necessarily advice, but just like how to handle the players. And, how, and he had his own way of doing it. It was just two guys talking. I was old enough at the time to where I, he really respected me. I just remember one day how he calls me into his office. I'm like, oh, man, what the heck is going on? He's like, hey, stay out of the head coach's office. I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? I'm like, we're buddies. He's like, look, it just gives a wrong impression to the team. So mm-hmm. Among other things. So you can just imagine, like, that's one story. Yeah, it's such a small little example, Howie. but it just shows example. his influence. It, it shows, shows his influence. It shows he has the pulse on everything. And a lot of people don't recognize, and I'm not saying this is why they lost all the games, but Big Dom DeSandro, man, he has a big part in that team with Nick Sirianni keeping him cool on the sideline. Everyone saw 
you know, the whole thing that went down where he's tugging on a player on the sideline. He's no longer on the sideline. Philadelphia Eagles now made him a coach so he can be on the sideline, among many other things. That's a big thing. Uh, I know Dom and Howie work really well together, and same with Nick. Um, so you just got to love to see him turn it around because I, I agree with you. I can't imagine the leash is that long if they don't uh, make the playoffs. I think we both can agree just – the changes that they made, maybe at the time I didn't necessarily understand it and agree with all of it, but where they're at now headed into this season, I, I just think they're built for success on the coaching staff and on the field. So we'll see how this all comes together. But the Dallas Cowboys getting ready to head out to Oxnard, California. You see the difference there? See, this is why you, you, you actually got some real knowledge there. When you're, I didn't know that Big Dom was actually now a coach for the Eagles. And you're getting the dynamics of it. And you feel like, you know, I'd like to pick Chase Daniel's brain, man. I'd like to sit down, have a beer or, or a shot of rum and all that, and just talk football and just hang out. I don't know that I feel like that with Skip Bayless. You see the energy and stuff. And something else... I'm not going to give that secret away. They actually have one of the secrets that I always tell when people come to me and they ask, you know, what can I do to help my channel and this, that, and the other just starting out. They're actually doing one of the things that I always tell people to do that is subliminal. And, and I'm going to keep that one to myself. I'll, I'll keep that one to myself. If you're starting out a new channel and things and you, you want some tips and stuff, you know, by all means, you know, come to me and, you know, and I'll be more than happy to share with you. I'm not just going to broadcast it to everybody, but, you know, you know, when I look at somebody like my man, Game Time Brian, who has been my grasshopper, so to speak, you see how he has grown in leaps and bounds and just taking some of the tips and things that I've kind of given him to him. And now he's closing in on 30,000 and literally uh, that first year and stuff. So shout out to the mailman, Game Time Brian. But let's go back through and continue this just a little bit more because, of course, I, I, we've all heard Stephen Jones talking about um, – working on the contracts everybody's showing that but i just want to do a little bit more to let them segue into the conversation they were brilliant to bring in stephen jones because nobody would be out here like they are because um of him dropping this bomb they would be you know seen as they're growing and growing and chase daniels has done great film breakdown and stuff he is the new generation that will be big time. You look at somebody like Pat McAfee, you look at Shannon Sharp and things like that. They're younger, they've got the energy, they've got the knowledge, they've got the experience and things, and they're translating it to you where you say, that's my guy I wanna hang out with. Unfortunately, Skip Bayless has burned so many bridges, it's just not there. California for their training camp, and we still have no idea what is going on. <laughs> What like, is happening? What is happening? So many deals to get done. Dak, CD, Micah. I mean, all these guys. They haven't done anything. Nothing. We just don't understand the philosophy. We just spent 20 minutes talking about the Philadelphia Eagles. Howie Roseman gets deals done. He makes sense, right, when he does these things. I get why he gets stuff done early. Why does Dallas drag their feet? I don't get, like, I don't understand it. I don't I understand it either. so many different people. So, I'm tired of asking people outside the Dallas organization. I think we need to call Dallas. So let's use our Scoop City hotline, our Scoop City phone. Do, 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 do. do you accept a collect call from Scoop City? Scoop City. <laughs> Joining us now, Cowboys Executive VP, Stephen Jones. Stephen, that. That welcome was to cute. Scoop City. Do you want to be a resident? Absolutely. Sign me up. Chase has the question for you that the world is dying to know in regards to the Dallas Cowboys. Were you ever interested in me in free agency? <laughs> Did I ever make it up on your board? You, decide? Because, you know, I'm from Dallas, man. There is no question. You were always on the board. I, I <laughs> truthfully will say that. I think the, the bigger thing was, Chase, you were always uh, too pricey for us as a backup. <laughs> we were always bottom fishing, as you well know, yeah. if you followed us. Our backups have been guys. Dirt uh, cheap. You know, we did have Dalton come through, and uh, yeah, he was Andy. from Fort Worth, and he decided to play for quite a bit less. But, you know, between Romo and Dak and uh, the crew, we've been paying the, the top guy a lot of money. <laughs> so uh, we've been having to bottom fish for that backup guy or go young. But uh, we always had nothing but respect for you. In other words, we just cheat. Uh, uh, I saw some of the, uh, some of the things when uh, – 
uh, Rusini sent me all your good stuff, and you have played for about everybody in the league. I, I didn't know <laughs> Everyone. It was that many. <laughs> I know, neither did I. Seven teams, 14 years, like some coaches uh, that are awesome. So, yeah, at least I made the list, so I'm happy with that. Well, what uh, what a lot of people would give to do that. I've got a son who played ball right there in the Park Cities at Highland Park, and he would have given anything to have your career. So hats off to you, and uh, you've been great for the league and great to be on a show with you. Hey, well, I appreciate don't, that. Don't, don't sell your son too short. He, he had a very, yes. very good career from what I could recall. And I know he's doing some work with the Cowboys now and doing all that. But you of course, should not it's a family business. What, what he was oh, I'm do. not at all. He had a hell of a high school career and played at Arkansas and played in games. Incredible. Had a lot of fun with it. Do you enjoy, did you enjoy watching him play, even, even just at the high school level, level just as much as when, when you're watching the Dallas Cowboys? What, what, what's the difference? Oh, right, absolutely. So, so there you can see what I'm talking about and why I believe that Scoop City will end up being miles away. They will eclipse channels. They are going to be a rocket ship that's going to take off. Um, and and very, very happy for them because, you know, in the end, it's about putting in the work and things like that to get the, the results. And there is no secret. There is no secret when it comes to uh, YouTube. It's really what you, you get out of it, what you put into it. And it is a lot of work to try and build it, at least when you're old and ugly like I am. So, I'm just kind of having a little bit of fun this morning um, and just kind of relaxing. It's the calm before the storm, you know, catch my breath. I'm going to be working over on a house where uh, I'm going to rebuild the kitchen this weekend for them and stuff. And so come next week when training camp opens up, we're going to have a ball. Um, <clears throat> we'll be in Oxnard with Dan Salio and things. We'll be at the preseason game against the Rams. We'll be at the practice game. We talk about practice against the Rams on that Thursday. So we'll be there for uh, about eight days. I can't wait to go. I can't believe that it's two weeks from tomorrow and so what we're going to be doing is um shout out to anybody who's done a super chat or any channel members and things like that we're going to be doing some drawings we have some of our prints that are autographed that we're going to be giving away um, if you end up doing a super chat or become a channel member your name is entered in there uh, we'll be doing <clears throat> probably one tomorrow and another one on Monday night. And we'll keep on doing those giveaways and stuff of the autograph merchandise shirts and everything else to, uh, you know, because we appreciate everything you guys do. Now, here's the thing that I go back to that. The reality is, is nobody really knows shit because people will go through the analysts and stuff. They'll look at all the data and things and they'll come up with the conclusion and not really know what they're talking about. So this is last year's preseason poll from ESPN. And to a man, almost everybody said the Eagles, second best team in football, will win. And the Cowboys, of course, haven't done anything. Are to the Eagles in that division and I guess in the, in the NFC at large? You know, it, it, they're closer for sure. Absolutely. But it definitely comes down to what Marcus is talking about. In the end, is your quarterback putting you into trouble and can he get out of it in the critical moments? And that's the difference between Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott. It was last year specifically. Jalen Hurts did not turn the football over and Dak Prescott did in the critical moments. That is the bottom line of the difference between the two football teams. And if you're looking for an extra piece to help Dak Prescott, certainly Jonathan Taylor would be one of those players who could do that, yeah. for sure. If you're all in, then go all in. If you think you the go. circumstances around your team, within your conference, put you in the best possible position, then get that one player like the Eagles I did with A.J. Brown last yeah. season. You know what? We didn't get to when we talked about this in the first hour of our program today. I asked everyone on this set to pick the winner of the NFC East. Oh. And I've got it here. It says Greeny, Eagles. Swagoo, Eagles. Sal, mm -hmm. Eagles. Graziano, Cowboys. <laughs> smart Talk one. to me, Danny. Well, the last time the same team won the NFC East two years oh, in a row was 2003-2004. Wow. 
That was a long time ago. Right. I think weird things happen in the NFC East that we don't see coming. Yeah. The division is always pretty closely matched. I mean, what did you say? Cowboys and Eagles split their games last Maybe year, right? Last year, yep. Like it's not that they're not that far and off. Jalen Hurts didn't play in the second, and then Dak the Prescott Cowboys. and Jalen Hurts well, have not. They have Dak not played play against the first one. one. Oh, okay. Yeah, they yeah. haven't played that's one right. another. That's right. They, that's right. That I don't play one another. The Cooper I, Rush era. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Dak Prescott is a 15 interception a year guy. There's nothing in his career prior to last year that says that. So I think that was an anomaly. Uh, Swagoo's point about being able to elevate in the big games is, is a good one and a fair one, and I think Dak Prescott would probably agree with it, right? Like, he knows. So, but I do think he'll, he won't put them in harm's way as much this year, and I can't. I, I've, I've been following that NFC East too long. I cannot pick the same team to win it that won it last year. Well, he was actually right. Myself to it. If the general uh, perception of them is one that we agree with. So at ESPN, we released our NFL preseason power rankings. And the NFC East is very well represented. Yeah. If you look at this closely, I'll get to my bone to pick a little bit later. <laughs> no wonder but if you is. look at it, there's not a lot of NFC representation here, Marcus. So if you just were to look at the NFC teams, they have the Eagles, the Niners, Eagles weren't there. and then the Cowboys. Yep. Is that right to you? Is, is, is the that the right weren't. order within the, the NFC weren't. power? Seahawks That's weren't. the right order to Jets me. Weren't. Steelers uh, as it stands right now. And then the, the Lions would be the next NFC yeah, team but, and then the Seahawks. But because of what we know about the three teams, and use, it, it's come down to them, obviously the 49ers and the Cowboys in the playoffs the past couple, uh, couple years. Mm -hmm. But the three top teams in the NFC before any games are played are Philly, San Fran, and Dallas. I, I, look, the Eagles belong there, right? Like, the Eagles should be the favorites to win <laughs> the NFC East. I, I should sensibly be picking them, but it doesn't happen. Right. Something he was really right. happens, and the Cowboys are good enough to take advantage of that if the Eagles are just off by this much this year from where they were last year. All right, so I want to try something. I, this was an idea that I had. If it All right, we're going to leave it right there because we've gotten a little bit long-winded here and so on. And it's okay because this is a relaxed day. This is... Wusa, the calm before the storm, because it's about to get old. Oh my God, I'm so happy that the season is upon us. As always, 